The Delta IX rocket was donated by the United States Space Administration and by a grant from the United States Department of Antiquities. The Delta IX rocket, commissioned by the USSA in 2020, was the last of the manned rockets that sent our brave American astronauts to the moon. The Delta IX was in use for almost 15 years before being converted for military use and having the crew and instrument sections replaced with a nuclear warhead. The Delta IX recorded over 77 successful launches, making it one of the most successful rockets in US history. The rocket, developed entirely by USSA scientists, was a single-stage vehicle with an ejectable crew section or satellite storage day. The propulsion system was a nuclear electric derivative drive, using a massive electrical jolt to start the nuclear reaction on launch. The crew section was protected from the radioactive chambers by way of a massive titanium vanadium disc. The spacecraft had the capability to sustain two astronauts for up to 24 days maximum. The longest recorded spaceflight in a Delta IX rocket was the 17 days U.S. 12 mission to the moon. This exhibit is undergoing renovation and should return soon. Thanks. Hey there, Jigs. I finally found a good place to ditch your share of the loot. It was hell getting here, but I made it. I left the usual breadcrumbs all over some of the info terminals in this place, their computer security was a joke. Complete the sequence and you're home free, but make any mistakes and the system will lock you out. We'll meet up in the usual spot later. Good luck, Prime.
This is a scaled model of a prototype military transport vehicle being developed by the US military. The XVB-02 Vertibird is a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, craft with an extremely durable armored fuselage and can be armed with a variety of offensive weapons and defensive countermeasures. This is the most advanced aircraft of its kind ever developed, and the military hopes to press them into service by 2085. Cigarettes are getting harder to find. The planet Jupiter is larger than 1,000 Earths. The outer layers of the Sun have what's known as differential rotation. The equator of the surface rotates once every 25.4 days but near the poles it rotates once every 36 days. A neutron star is completely dense and solid matter. In fact, it weighs a trillion times heavier than lead. That means a piece of a neutron star the size of a pinhead would weigh as much as a large building. The Sun loses almost 4 million tons of mass every second by turning hydrogen gas into energy. That adds up to almost 345 billion tons per day. If we were to send a message to someone on a planet belonging to our closest neighboring solar system, Alpha Centauri, which is almost 4.4 light years away, we wouldn't receive a reply message for 8.8 .8 years. There are about 175 billion galaxies in the observable universe each with as few as 10 million stars up to giants with 1 trillion stars. All orbiting a common center of mass. If all of the particles that make up Saturn's rings were gathered together, they would form a sphere about 120 miles in diameter. Olympus Mons, a volcano found on Mars, is the largest known volcano in the solar system. It is 370 miles, 595 kilometers, across and rises 15 miles, 24 kilometers. That's three times taller than Mount Everest.
sounds of our planet as we take off for the stars. Kid. Come on, let's get moving. On July 16, 1969, the Virgo 2 lunar lander Valiant 11 became the very first manned space vehicle to touch down on the moon. The Valiant 11's crew consisted of Captain Richard Wade, Captain Mark Garris and Captain Michael Hagen of the U.S.S.A. We salute these brave and noble men who took the very first steps on a planetary body other than our own. The medals in this case were typically awarded to American pilots in World War II. From left to right, top row to bottom, Medal of Honor, Distinguished Service Cross, Silver Star, Distinguished Flying Cross, Navy Cross, Air Medal, Bronze Star, and the Purple Heart.
This unusual flag was recovered from the surface of the moon by the very last manned flight to its surface in 2052. The flag is from the old Valiant 12 Virgo 3 lunar lander that touched down November 14, 1969. Its remarkable condition can be attributed to its construction. The flag is actually made of special materials to withstand the harsh environment of space. This is the actual skeleton of Captain Carl Bell who died on May 5, 1961 after his space capsule crash landed. Captain Bell is credited as being the first human in space on board the space capsule Defiance 7, but this has been constantly refuted by both the Soviet Union and China. Defiance 7's fight lasted for a total of 12 minutes and 7 seconds as it achieved one full revolution around the Earth. Donated by Edwina Bell. This is the actual U. S. S. A deep space suit worn by Captain Carl Bell on May 5, 1961. Captain Bell is credited as being the first human in space on board the space capsule Defiance 7, but this has been constantly refuted by both the Soviet Union and China. Defiance 7's flight lasted for a total of 12 minutes and 7 seconds as it achieved one full revolution around the Earth.
attention, all museum security personnel. The International Ordnance Museum has graciously loaned us some of their prized antique weapons for the firearms exhibition being displayed in the atrium. The exhibit will be in place from August the 14th, 2077 until December the 31st, 2077. Please adjust your rounds accordingly and of an extra security presence in this area at all times. Attention, all museum security personnel. I'd like to request that all riot gear and security firearms be moved to the new gun locker in the planetarium research office. Cabinet should remain locked at all times. The key to the cabinet must be carried by the duty shift supervisor and left in the security office safe when shift changes occur and at closing time. Donald Cohen lead museum curator. Attention, all museum security personnel. The Museum of Technology annual gala dinner will be held in the atrium on November the 1st, 2077. We expect over 100 attendees including several local dignitaries and heads of state. Please set up security checkpoints and provide visible coverage for this event as per security mandate 99078B in your handbook. Donald Cohen lead museum curator. of the capital wasteland, it is I, Three Dow, your ruler. Hear me and obey. Oh, sorry, that's that other radio station. Here's the latest news. Unemployment is down, stocks are up, and the UN has just declared global peace forever. Now the real news. Ugh. Yeah, you guessed it. Time for another update on the villain of the wastes himself. That evil little bastard from Vault 101. Ooh, boy! Children, you are going to love this. Okay, so I told you about James, the guy from the vault. And then I told you somebody else crawled out of there too. To right. Well, guess who came to visit old Three Dog? at his luxurious studio in beautiful downtown D.C. That's right, the other vault dweller. Now, you want to know if it gets better, don't you? Well, hell yes, it gets better. Turns out vault dweller number two was none other than James's kid. I know, I know, I couldn't make this shit up. Okay, but now it gets kind of sad. You see, the kid is looking for his dad. Looking for James. See, James left Vault 101 without telling the kid why. Now, I've since learned that James is a scientist and is working on something big. Is that why he left the vault? Looks that way. So who knows, maybe James is going to save the world. Can't think of a better cause than that. But James, if you're listening, your kid's out, man. And he misses you. So you might want to find him before he gets swallowed up and spit out. And for all you other cats out there listening, if you see the kid from Vault 101 out there, give him a pound on the back and wish him luck. Until next time, this is Three Dog, and you're listening to Galaxy News Radio, bringing you the truth, no matter how bad it hurts. Now, some music. Concerns about security? Our eye on you can the unlikely event arise that the planet is laid to waste. We hope you've enjoyed our tour today. If you have any further questions, please take a short from the
for all tech guides. Nice job, Jigs. I knew you'd remember the good old days. The loot is in the security office safe in the upper part of the West Wing. Use the terminal up there to get in. Enjoy your share, pal you earned it. Meet me in the old diner outside the Jury Street Metro Station. See you there. Good luck, Prime.
for that. I forgot how fucked up everything was out here. Hey, I found a... Damn it. Never mind. It wasn't any. Yeah, kid. What do you need? Sure. Give me whatever you got. Yeah. I hope things are going well.
Yeah, what is it? Sure, give me whatever you got. What are we standing around here for, when- Sure, give me whatever you got. I hope things are going well with you today, sir. What do you need? I sure am, Sonny. What have you got for me? Well, all right. Let me count out your cap. What are we standing around here for? Sure, give me whatever you got. Oh, hey! Kinda busy here, but I guess I can talk for a bit. What's up? If you've got the caps, I've got the skill. Absolutely.
Good hunting. Unless it's... Good hunting! announcement. Just a friendly reminder to all you would-be bigots out there, ghouls are people too. You see, children, ghouls are simply humans who've been exposed to an ungodly amount of radiation and haven't had the good fortune to die. Sure, they may look like hideous zombies from an old monster flick, but their hearts, their souls, their tears are all very much human. So please, if you meet one of the Capital Wasteland's many ghouls, leave your prejudice at the door, and your pistol in its holster. Ah yes, one important caveat, kiddies. Those feral ghouls that prefer the dark, dank underground? They are basically mindless zombies, so kill as many as you damn well please. And now, some music. <laughs> <laughs> 